roof system installation. It's now time for the final phase of construction, installing the roof system. The first step is to prepare the top cap by measuring down the bearing walls and marking every two foot on center. These marks will indicate where each truss is to be fastened. Be sure to measure each wall starting at the same end so the marks will line up on both sides. It's important that the top cap is clear of debris and truss locations are clearly marked. Truss installation. The trusses should have been stored properly and covered to protect them from the weather. Uncover the trusses and prepare them to be moved either by hand or machine. If lifting the trusses by machine, fasten the strapping securely to the trusses so that they will not break or get damaged. If any trusses are damaged in this process, contact our offices immediately. Do not attempt to fix the damaged trusses before contacting us. As each truss is hoisted into place, be sure that there is someone at the top of the wall as a guide and someone on the ground to relay directions to the crane operator. The gable end truss should be set first. This truss will sit on the end wall and will need to be recessed 7 16 of an inch to allow for the gable end sheathing. For easier installation, the gable end sheathing can be attached to the gable end truss prior to installation. Refer to your plans for bracing and for the placement of the structural components on the gable end. Next, lift each truss into place. Use the metal truss spacers to help space the trusses according to your plans. Be sure that each truss is set on its pre-designated mark, referring to the roof framing plans for the layout. Using 2 by lumber, temporarily brace each truss. This bracing will be removed once the trusses are permanently installed. Line up the edge of the trusses with the exterior of the wall so that they are flush. The trusses can now be nailed from the side of the truss heel into the top plate. When all the trusses are set in place and attached, install the permanent 2 by bracing and remove the temporary bracing. Eave blocking and gable overhang installation. For eave blocking, first cut the 2 by 12 lumber to lengths of 14 and a half inches. Nailing from the outside of the trusses, fasten each block between the trusses down each bearing wall. The subfascia will consist of 2x6 lumber nailed to the plumb end of the truss overhang. The 1x6 lumber can then be used for the finished fascia. For the gable overhang, cut the 2x4 lumber referring to the plans for the size and spacing details. These will be cut to length and attached to the first truss in from the gable end and will run out over the gable end truss creating the overhang. A 2x6 will then be attached to the end of the outriggers, creating the subfascia for the gable end. When the trusses are in place, attach the provided hurricane clips and nail them according to the manufacturer's specifications. Roof Sheathing Installation The next step is to close in the roof with the roof sheathing. Start at the eave. Attach the 4x8 sheets along the length of the roof. Unlike the floor decking, no adhesive is required prior to installation. Guide each sheet into place and nail, referring to your plans for nail size and nailing pattern. Fasten the sheets in rows up the roof, staggering the seams at four foot centers. Use the metal spacers in between the sheets to allow for shrinkage and swelling caused by changes in temperature. As full sheets are set in place, the edge of the sheet will fall at the center of each truss. Sheathing will need to be cut so that it does not extend past the ridge. Metal drip edge will be nailed to the intersection of the 1x6 fascia as well as the roof sheathing along both eaves. Roofing felt installation. Next, install the roofing felt which is supplied in 48 inch rolls. These are rolled out down the length of the roof and overlapped a minimum of 12 inches or as per the manufacturer's specifications. As the felt is rolled out, it is attached to the roof sheathing using a construction grade stapler. The roof is now ready to finish. A standard three tab or architectural shingle as seen here is most commonly used. Metal roofing and clay tiles are also popular. Following the manufacturer's specifications, attach the shingle to the roof sheathing. 
roof vent installation. The last part of the roof is installing the roof vents. The roof must be properly vented in order to maintain efficient airflow in the home. The vents that have been provided are installed by cutting a hole in the roof sheathing to the specified size in a location recommended by the manufacturer. The soffit is also vented by either drilling holes into the truss blocking or by building in the soffit and installing a soffit vent. The shell is complete and now ready to finish. The first step will be installing the windows and doors.